Well, the Voyager mission is one of the most uh, famous and historic missions that NASA has ever flown. Uh, it was originally conceived as what was called the Grand Tour uh, to fly by the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We proposed to fly an instrument on Voyager way back in the early 70s. And uh, we, the University of Iowa and my group, were selected to build the instrument. And that was in about 1974. And we had three years to build it. And uh, the, the thing I study is waves in plasmas, radio emissions. And so we proposed to fly two antennas on the spacecraft. And there are these two antennas out, out here. They're about uh, 10 meters, each about 10 meters long and so we can pick up low frequency radio waves. The holy grail of the uh, Voyager Interstellar mission is to reach the heliopause. And what is the heliopause? Well, the heliopause is the boundary between the solar wind gas or plasma coming out from the sun and the interstellar medium. When we uh, saw the data for the first time, uh, my reaction was, that's it. Those are the plasma oscillations we expected to find on the other side of the heliopause. I showed the data to Professor Garnett, and, and he was as excited as I was. That's it, no doubt about it, that's it. As soon as we saw these plasma oscillations, Bill Kurth and I said, we're in the interstellar medium. And the reason we knew that, the frequency was very high. It was uh, so high, it showed us that we were at 100 times the density we were uh, in the more inner part of the heliosphere. So just in a matter of seconds, we knew we were in the interstellar medium. So we uh, contacted some of our colleagues on the Voyager team and reported this result. Don Garnett uh, wrote a paper back in 1993 that said he had pretty wide limits on the distance, but uh, I think it was one of the first good predictions of where that boundary was gonna be. The University of Iowa is the birthplace of space physics, of space sciences of any kind. Um, Professor Van Allen was the uh, head of the department and he was interested in mapping the fluence of cosmic rays coming into the atmosphere. I went to Jim Van Allen and I said, can we fly this receiver on the next spacecraft, the one that I was currently working on called Engine 3? And he said, sure. So we flew it and I can remember this day when we first turned the transmitter on in orbit and we heard all these whistling tones and all kinds of plasma, what are now called plasma wave sounds, that we never knew was up there. And that changed my life. That changed me from an engineer to a physicist who is basically asking, what are all those sounds? I might say I consider this, you know, a, a considerable personal achievement to get to interstellar space. But I also have to say there's a lot of other people behind this mission. Uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and all the people that built the instrument and continue to operate it, that's an important part of this discovery. I could not have done that with all these people and their support and my colleague Bill Kurth, who's been a co-investigator on this uh, mission almost from the start.